Hi, and welcome to Organic Friday. Today we are talking about addition reactions, which are an important class of organic reactions that you need to know about for AP Chemistry. Now let's talk about the pattern for these addition reactions. When you've got an addition reaction, you need to realize that you're going to be starting with an alkene or an alkyne, something that is unsaturated. And you're going to react it usually with a halogen. And they're going to come together in a synthesis reaction where the halogen atoms end up attaching themselves to the hydrocarbon and making a halogenated alkane. So let's draw this pattern out. So if we are starting with some double bonded substance, I'm just focusing on the carbons and the double bonds, it could react with the halogen of your choice to form a halogenated alkane. Now what happens in the addition reaction is that the atoms of the halogen attach themselves to the two carbons in the multiple bond and then they actually add themselves to the same side so you're no longer having anything with multiple bonds everything's now single bonded. Now another sort of twist on addition reactions is that you may start with an alkene or an alkyne let me do an alkyne here and it reacts with hydrogen and depending on how much hydrogen you have reacting, you may take this down instead of a triple bond to a double bonded situation. If you react it with excess hydrogen, you may actually have enough to bring it all the way down to a saturated substance. So it, it, there's sort of a judgment area here whether it's going to go to the double bond or the single bond and that really comes down to how much hydrogen is present. Um, so for us in AP we are really just focusing on you knowing these patterns and writing reasonable expectations. When you go on and take organic chemistry in college you're going to learn about the mechanisms in more detail and how you might distinguish between these but right now this is what we want to focus on. So let's do some practice reactions. Let's start with this reaction where ethene gas is bubbled through a solution of chlorine. So ethene gas, we know, has two carbons double bonded to each other. And we're going to react it with chlorine, which we know is a diatomic. And the product that we make will have two chlorines on the carbon, on adjacent carbon, and actually on the same side, although the NAP that's not really a focus. Um, and so this is our bound station. Just as a practice, let's name this compound. We've got two carbons. They're all single bonded. So um, we're going to start with an ethane. And then we've got two chlorines on adjacent carbon. So the correct name of this product is 1,2-dichloroethane. Never hurts to review organic nomenclature. All right, let's do another reaction where we have propene combined with hydrogen gas in the presence of a platinum catalyst. So we have propene, so that's three carbons, and two of them are uh, bonded with a double bond. And then we have a bunch of hydrogens. All right, and we're reacting this with hydrogen. Now, in order for this reaction to occur, it does need a catalyst. Here we're using platinum. And there's an interesting mechanism involved with that for those of you who are interested in such things. And what we're going to get is the unsaturated substance, All right, where the carbons have as many hydrogens. I'm sorry, we're going to go from an unsaturated to a saturated substance where the product has as many single bonds as it can have. So this would be propane is our product. For one last reaction, we'll have ethyne gas, so triple bonded, bubbled through excess bromine. Now it does say that we have excess bromine. There's more than one possibility here. Perhaps we'll end up with only uh, one bond being broken to make 1,2-dibromoethane, ethene, excuse me, 
and it looks like they're on the same side, so this would be the cis isomer. If we added sufficient bromine, and it does say we have excess, perhaps it'll go down to the completely saturated molecule. And this would be, <laughs> the name of this is 1-1-2-2-tetrabromoethane. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? Like I said, it never hurts to review organic nomenclature. Now for AP students, I think either answer would be acceptable. They're certainly reasonable. Um, for those of anyone listening who's in a college level organic chemistry course, you need to consult your textbook and make sure that you're following this at an appropriate level. Thanks, and we'll talk another time.